Welcome to this episode of OpenSCAD by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the ultimate widget. So I was off surfing the old interweb the other day, and on YouTube, I had found, uh, come across a channel by the name of Skis Test Garage. I'll put a link to that down below to his channel. And one of the things he came out with in his latest video was um, taking a, you know, a data blade on his table saw and notching out some plywood to, you know, for bit storage. And I thought this this was a really neat concept, something I could translate very easily into OpenSCAD and uh, 3D print a very similar concept. And then I also got thinking, why limit this to just, you know, bits? I This stores a ton of different things. I'm going to have a video coming out on the main channel, uh, DIY3DTech.com, so be sure to check that out because I'm going to talk a little bit more about its practical uses and design concepts there. But here today, I'm just going to really focus on some of the stuff with regards to the code and how I set this piece up. So originally when I started this out, it was really just as a bit holder, and so I defined my first variable as being the bit size and so you see here I have it set for a six millimeter bit now one of the things I added is a reduced diameter the reason I added this is to compensate for plastic contraction because one of the pieces keep in mind the bit or whatever you're going to stick in here will fit inside these grooves and typically one of the things you get is is plastic uh, contraction and so I did this as a reduction where bit diameter is reduced by uh, the reduction diameter so I can you know either positively or negatively affect the the uh, uh, contraction of the plastic and it's going to depend upon the plastic you use for example PLA is going to react differently than PETG so this will accept a positive or a negative number to adjust so here I found adjusting back by 0.5 um, you know helps kind of fit the plastic which I used PETG better so Anyways, take it as you will, but an interesting little concept to add is a plastic modifier. Uh, the other piece that I set up is size of the block. So we have the base block set up down here, and we can vary the size. Now I am using the rounding module to get the chamfered corners, as you see here. And I had used for the uh, super block here uh, actually a rounded corner, but then the problem I started running into is the way that the the rounded uh, module works it starts creating kind of funky rounded corners so I switched back for the super block uh, to just a cube function with 90 degree angles so kind of give you a little logic on the background and so again you can kind of see here we have X Y and a Z uh, you know so we can set up and, and define the size of our you know widget is in total now the other piece we have is the lip uh, so I'm creating a 10 millimeter lip and then uh, the Z height lip uh, is 5. So the XY lip is this component here where the Z lip is this component. So by adjusting those, you can change the size of the base. Lip curl, I've got set to 3. This is real simple. This is just a chamfer for the rounded module. And then XY adjust. These are in my fudge factors because one of the pieces... Um, that I did with this is because the the slot shape I would call it semi irregular I know a lot of people are going to probably pick on me because you're saying hey wait a minute mr. DIY 3d tech.com you're defining bit bit size above and you also have a reduced diameter but it, it gets kind of wanky a little bit trying to center um, non holes in this and when I say non holes if we go down here and look at I'm having to use the rounded uh, sorry not that rounded function in my my for loops I'm using the uh, round function to round off the numbers because what's going to happen is if I have an odd size to distance of the super cube up here then it's not going to match so I use these cheats to kind of XY coordinate them now usually one coordinate for example you notice in this case it's pretty much centered and I'm using four and four that's going to be pretty much the theme throughout I could have got away with really probably one fudge factor but I added two fudge factors just for the fact of if I want to skew this for some reason I can do it without changing it now the multiplication factor is now I'm going to you know increase the number of steps per 
uh, slot and so if we just come back here and let's change this to a one you see what happens is now we have this type of configuration versus the other so it really depends upon how how many slots you want to have and then how much spacing between each perpendicular cross section or this area you want to have so again if we go back to change this back to two and re-render it notice the space between the perpendiculars now are basically doubled so if you have larger bits or objects you want to set in here then you obviously need to have more separative space between those openings and this provides it so with that being said most of the other components of this are pretty straightforward again I, I'm just using the rounded module down here you've seen me use several times before actually many times before I'm cutting a groove uh, both uh, XY planes down here with this and again very similar code to I've used in the pegboard situation except now I'm using it to create slats rather than to place individual holes which created a level of uniqueness on its own because again it's a little bit easier to place individual holes than it is to do slats and again that's why I did it with the fudge factor now if I would have spent a lot of time I could have probably adapted it um, you know using far more logic but again I wanted to do something that was just quick and dirty and this was the easiest path to achieve that just to kind of see conceptually if it works so if you guys want to wrestle with that and send some code back I'd appreciate it anyways um, again wanted to share this with you guys so the code will be out on the open SCAT site I'll have the link to that down below I've put several base STLs out on Thingiverse for this again I'm calling this universal widget because one of the pieces I started out kind of you know mimicking what Keith's test garage was doing with regards to storing bits because I've got a ton of basically eighth inch or three millimeter bits that I need to store and, but I got thinking I, I, I created a couple of these smaller 30 by 30 cubes and had them on my desk and just by proxy I started placing different things in them like memory cards pieces of paper and I got thinking hey why the heck limit this just to bits these are kind of cute little gimmicky things so uh, feel free to let your mind uh, wander with what you can stick in them so anyways hopefully you found this video interesting if you did give it a big thumbs up don't forget subscribe I put out regular content uh, at least semi regular and here on the open SK channel don't forget to follow us over on the main channel DIY 3 dtechcom because we're always putting stuff out there uh, probably three to four times a week so with that we'll see you in the next video where we design something else cool in open SCAD next time cheers